Russell Brand has been accused of sexually assaulting an actress on the set of the 2011 film Arthur. Warner Brothers, which distributed Arthur and which is under the spotlight, um, is also named as a defendant, as are other firms who were involved in the making of the movie. And the lawsuit accuses them of tolerating Russell Brand's misconduct on set and aiding and abetting the alleged offence. The accuser says that she was hired for a scene which was filmed in Manhattan in July 2010. The woman, who is seeking unspecified financial damages, said she suffered severe psychological injuries and economic losses after the alleged attack. Brand has denied the allegations. Now, it's interesting to note that most media outlets refer to this woman as an extra on the film, not an actress or an actor, but someone who is disposable. Because when you hear about extra, you, they're usually nameless and often often largely faceless. You wouldn't be able to recognise them necessarily again. And uh, there is a feeling of someone beneath him, beneath Russell Brand, someone who may want to bring him down. So that is the way the media is framing it. Russell Brand is also currently being investigated by Thames Valley Police and the Metropolitan Police for allegations including harassment, stalking and sex offences. Brand has previously denied all the claims, saying all sexual relations were consensual. So what I want to say is that this comment isn't so much about what I think about Russell Brand or his relevance, but about how easy it has been to discredit him and no doubt how easy it will continue to be to discredit him. It's important to remember in the eyes of the public that if you discredit the person, you discredit the message. And over the last few years, Russell Brand has attached himself to lots of messages. And so one must ask whether he was allowed to rise to a certain position and then the brakes put on him when he crossed the line. Some people would have it that he is actual controlled opposition, that he has been put in place to discredit such important issues as experimental jabs, central bank digital currencies, uh, the problems with lockdown, the problems with the who, et cetera, et cetera. That's not my position as such. I think rather than him being controlled opposition, he's opposition that is easy to control because of his history and the alleged skeletons in his cupboard. So first of all, just a bit of background about him. Russell Edward Brand was born in Grays, Essex in June 1975. He's an English comedian, actor, presenter, activist and campaigner. His early career was as a stand-up comedian and radio host before becoming a film actor. He's won uh, many um, awards and nominations over the course of his career. He's been a darling of media for many, many years. So it's quite interesting that people are now saying that the media are out to get him um, because he was one of theirs for a long, long time. And, uh, He's had an extensive career, uh, um, both from Hollywood and mainstream media. So let's uh, just consider some of the things that he's been involved in. He's been involved in um, in the UK, Big Brother, Big Brother, um, Big Brothers, Big Big Mouth, which is a Big Brother spin-off. Um, his first major British film role was in St. Trinian's. He was in the Hollywood movie Forgetting Sarah Marshall. He was also in the movie Get Him to the Greek. He was in Arthur, Rock of Ages, uh, Despicable Me, Trolls. His um, acting tentacles have been spread far and wide over a period of years. And for a period of time, around about 2013, he was the darling of lefty politics. I remember him endorsing Ed Miliband at the general election, which was just gruesome. Ed Miliband was not opposition at all. So at that time, Russell Brand was really raised up to great heights. He was um, he he had a guest editing spot on the New Statesman. Um, he was sort of the darling of lefty media such as The Guardian and Independent. They absolutely loved him. He was famously sacked um, by MTV. He used to present a show for dressing up as Osama bin Laden on 9-11. He later said it was because he was on drugs. He was an extensive addict in a number of ways. That's one of the reasons why... It is so easy to discredit a man like Russell Brand because of his history. By his own admission, he was a crack and heroin addict, a sex addict, numerous other kind of addicts. 
going on. And that makes him eminently compromisable. There's no getting away from the fact that Russell Brand has always had something of a God complex. I appreciate that some people who are watching this video absolutely love and adore Russell Brand. I'm not taking anything away from you. I'm literally just giving you my opinion. So Russell Brand, that God com complex of his, well, he released a book called Revolution. He acted in a documentary about the emperor's new clothes. He wrote a children's book based on the Pied Piper of Hamelin. And he even had a tour called the Messiah Complex. And that's just for starters. But it gives everybody a pretty decent idea about the size of his ego. And there's nothing wrong with having a good, healthy ego, right? Nothing wrong at all. But where I personally went off him was in 2008. I was never a major fan, but I did think he was entertaining. Um, obviously, the thing about Russell Brand is he's very pretty. And that was one of the reasons why he was um, he's been given such prominence is because of his prettiness and because of how handsome he is. Um, but in, in 2008, that was the moment when I drew the line about this comedian and it was when he had a BBC Radio 2 show and in a pre-recorded segment with Jonathan Ross they made a prank call to actor Andrew Sachs. Andrew Sachs was most famously known as being Manuel in Faulty Towers and at one stage Russell Brand had dated for want of a better description Andrew Sachs, Andrew Sachs granddaughter Georgina and Russell Brand and Jonathan Ross rang Andrew Sachs and they left a message on his answer machine, which was horrible. It was a message about Andrew Sachs' granddaughter, and it was full of really vulgar, lewd comments about Andrew Sachs' granddaughter. It was just horrible. The BBC received a record number of complaints. They suspended Jonathan Ross, while Ofcom launched investigations, both Brand and the Radio 2 controller at the time, Leslie Douglas, resigned from the BBC. The BBC also suspended Jonathan Ross without pay for 12 weeks. And BBC was ultimately fined by Ofcom for £150,000. Now, one of the things that Russell Brand is most famous for is being articulate. And he is, well, some would say verbose. Um, like Jordan Peterson, like Vanessa Feltz, Russell Brand is not e economical with words, right? He gushes them like a well that has been blocked. If 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 five words are suffice, Russell Brand will use 20 words to tell you about it. That's what he does. And I always have some issues with people who are overly wordy because oftentimes it's hiding something else or it's used for a manipulation because most things can be said very clearly, straight to the point. They don't need to be dressed up as flowery as Russell Brand makes them. But nonetheless, some people like that side of him. One of the things that I think has emerged throughout all of this, the allegations around Russell Brand is, can a leopard change its spots? By his own admission, he was just a degenerate, for want of a better description, right? Multiple addictions, from sex to drugs, um, and clearly somebody with something of um, a history that was tarnished. But, you know, is it not possible for people to improve their lives, for people to change who they were previously when they find some stability? Um, are people allowed to change? Because we should be able to change, right? And of course, the thing is, Russell Brand appears to have decently changed into a settled individual. He's a husband. He's a father. He makes regular online content that gives people glimpses into his normalness, such as sort of making handicrafts with his wife, Laura, all very nice, all very almost mid-morning TV, nice, mainstream media, nice kind of stuff. And that's one of the things that makes people question whether he is indeed controlled opposition, because what is he really, really doing? that is different, that is breaking the mold? Well, I think that's a question for another time, right? Um, but I, I, like, for example, there are there are some people in the so-called truth movement who do not trust him and that do not hide that. And one of those is David Icke. And I actually had a sort of ringside view of why that occurred, right? So basically my insight into Russell Brand came around 2012, 2013, when I was the lead anchor on David Icke's The People's Voice. 
I also had my own issues with David Icke and we had something of a falling out when I left the people's voice calling for transparency. Um, but I did see close up what was happening regarding Russell Brand and David Icke. So basically, I remember the night that David met Russell and it was at a Soho club. I think it might even have been the Groucho club. And I remember... David Icke telling me about it and saying, you know, really interesting guy, got lots to say, and he's going to be backing and supporting the People's Voice. Well, when we launched People's Voice in November 2013, Russell Brown was nowhere to be seen. And it is a fact that David Icke was absolutely aware that what Russell Brand was doing was actually taking what David Icke had already created to a certain degree. Russell Brand was able to see that David David Icke had a market, right? He had a market which was so-called conspiracy theory. But Russell Brand took that one step further. He took it into a mainstream way, right? Which was much more popularist than what David was doing. And so it garnered much more listeners and made him much more... Um, capable of crossing over into the mainstream because David, of course, had long been demonized and discredited. I mean, in the round, after about 10 years later of my issues with David Icke, I, I can see why it must be incredibly frustrating for him to see other people like Russell Brand come up after him on his coattails and to a degree surpass him in many respects in terms of how far the reaches. So that would have been really frustrating for um, David Icke. And, and I got that, you know. And so the thing is, though, is I, I have to ask that given the sort of degeneracy of Russell Brand's background and all the stuff that is now being alleged about him, and some of them are very, very serious crimes and not, you know, not something that a truth movement should be associated with whatsoever but but I have to ask because I know that it is a question that people ask and that is is it possible that Russell Brand embedded himself into the truth movement to cultivate a supportive audience when the stuff hit the fan is that possible or am I just being too cynical I mean because the fact is it is um, that very audience or indeed this audience because some of them watch me too we have similar audiences it is that knows how truth seekers get demonized and discredited, right? And get penalized by the establishment for speaking out. And it could well be that Russell Brand just kind of um, lost his usefulness for his handlers. Because there is no doubt that at one stage he was definitely being handled. I mean, unquestionably so. This is really a short comment about him. I intend at some stage to do a much deeper dive about Russell Brand because the whole era around him being married to Katy Perry is really interesting. Um, but I just did want to comment on this new sexual allegations because this is the first one to hit the courts. Is this a Me Too movement or what? I mean, it is my understanding and my experience that truly radical people do not get to rise to Russell Brand's status in Hollywood and in mainstream media unless they are compromisable. Brand was able to rise because his addiction made him compromised. To be clear, the companies who employed him, despite everyone knowing he was a junkie sex addict, may now be trying to distance themselves. They're like, we didn't know, you know, or, um, you know, that sort of those sort of things were much more acceptable than everybody accepted him as the sort of cheeky chap who was admitting to his frailties. But the fact is, is that they're not moral arbiters of what is and isn't right in media, but they are enablers. They benefited from him being a dirty young man. So the question remains, was Russell Brand allowed to become the figurehead of an alternative media because the establishment knew that they could destroy him at any moment and along with him, a movement that represented a challenge to the established order? Is he the fall guy or the one who enabled this to happen in the first place?